Welcome, friends, to day three of Philippians chapter three. I'm thankful that you're here. I have kept things very simple today. I've only asked two questions, but those two questions, two good questions, have really highlighted just who God is. And my heart is so touched this morning. Ah, Let me go ahead and read the passage and I'll share my two questions with you. Here we go. Philippians chapter 3 verse 12. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. All right, so my two questions. What do we learn about Paul and what do we learn about who God is from this passage? It's pretty simple. We learn a lot about Paul. There's so many verbs in this passage. Uh, Paul shares right from the get-go, look, I have not already obtained this. I'm not already perfect. And we might ask, you know, one question leads to another question. We might ask, okay, Paul, what have you not already attained? And we have to go back to yesterday and see that he ends uh, with verse 11, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. So Paul has a new life in Christ, but he's not already resurrected from the dead, right? Uh, That is a hope for the future. So Paul says this, uh, he also tells us, look, he is pressing on to make this his own, to make the resurrection his own. Why? Because Jesus has made him his own. And number three, Paul does not consider this work to be his own. We talked about that yesterday. He unpacked that yesterday. This is God's work. And we're going to dig into that here in a minute when we look at What does Paul tell us about who God is? And number four, Paul forgets what lies behind. He forgets the past. Remember all this, all this that he shared at the beginning of the chapter, who he was. He forgets all of that. And what does he do? Number five, he strains forward to what lies ahead, the resurrection. Friends, there's no sitting in guilt. There is confessing our sin and being right before a holy God, but then there is looking forward to the living hope that we have through Jesus Christ. There's looking forward to, Paul says, what lies ahead. Again, this is the resurrection from the dead. Paul has great hope. This is the basis of his joy. Number six, Paul presses on to the goal. What's that goal? To hold on to this faith, to hold on to what he has already attained. What has he attained? He has attained Christ. He has believed and trusted in Christ. And number seven, we see that Paul is mature in faith to think the way that he thinks. And then number eight, he is holding true to what he has attained. And I just said it. What has he attained? He has attained Christ. And for Paul, I mean, this just circles right back to Paul saying, look, for me to live is Christ. This is what I have attained. Now, Paul, what, why might we ask this question? What do we learn about who Paul is? Well, Paul provides us with this beautiful example of how to live, right? Someone who has attained Christ, who is believing in Christ, trusting in Christ, and he is following in Christ's footsteps. So he gives us an example for how to think and how to speak and how to live. 
practical, practical application. We could pick any one of those things and apply it for today, right? Maybe we need to forget yesterday, forget what lies behind uh, and put our eyes on the future. Uh, Maybe we need to just persevere, press on through some trial we're in the midst of. We could take any one of these things that we learn about who Paul is and make that a practical application for today. But my favorite question, friends, and many of you know this already if you've studied with me, is asking this question. Like if we are really short on time, this is the one question I will ask about scripture. What is it I learn about who God is? And that really jumped out to me today. Of course, that's kind of where I focused as well. Uh, What do I learn about God? Number one, Christ Jesus made Paul his own. Uh, That was in verse 12. Paul says, but I press on to make it my own. Why? Because Christ Jesus has made me his own. And friends, this is the verse that just undoes. I mean, my heart is undone. Uh, Again, Paul is emphasizing that this is God's work. This is Jesus Christ's work. There is nothing that Paul did uh, to make himself Christ. This was Christ's work. And here, Paul says it in such a beautiful way. Uh, If we put, and I did, this phrase, to make uh, to make it my own or to make it his own. This this phrase is repeated three times. And when something is repeated in scripture, it's important. Uh, it's a key word in my mind. So I put that in my keyword column and I looked it up. It's one word in the Greek that means to be one, to be acquired through someone's effort. Um, and so What is Paul saying? Look, I press on to make it my own because Christ has made me his own. Christ has won. Christ has acquired me. He has won me. I am his. I am his prize. It's basically what Paul is saying. Friends, (laughs) I, I, I just think that is so incredibly beautiful and it's almost hard for me to think about being a prize in Jesus Christ's eyes. I mean I just want to sit there for a while and maybe we should. Maybe we should. Let's take that, tuck it away, tuck it away in the pocket of our heart and and just ponder on it, meditate on it for the rest of the day. Uh, that's, that's my application for the day. When we know who we are, then we know what to do. All right. And we're going let, to, let's unpack this just a little bit more. What do I learn about God? Christ. Okay. So number one, Christ Jesus made Paul his own. This is Christ's work. We are his. Uh, he has won us. We are his prize. Number two, this upward call, uh, this call, which is an an authoritative summons. This is an authoritative summons. Paul is speaking to a specific one, an authoritative summons by God to the hope of salvation in Jesus Christ. So that call is God's. That upward call is God's in Christ. Christ Jesus. Once again, this is his work. I didn't go asking for it. God called me to himself. And that's what Paul is saying here. And number three, God will reveal wrong and right thinking. When we are seeking after God, when we are his, when we're trusting in him in faith, he will reveal wrong and right thinking. I mean, how... Just how comforting is that? 
How comforting is that? Very comforting for me. A cross reference of John 7, 17, it says this, If anyone's will is to do God's will, he will know whether the teaching is from God or whether I am speaking on my own authority. That was Jesus speaking. Um, so for those of us who are seeking after God and seeking to live according to his will, he will reveal it to us through Jesus Christ and through his spirit. And so then Paul says, you know, ending with this, only let us hold true to what we have already attained. What have we attained? We have attained Christ and no matter what we're going through, what trials we are going through today, we are called to hold on to that faith, hold on to Christ as he holds on to us. We are his prize. We can trust him. We hold on. We persevere. Um, we, we, I like how Paul says it. How does he, how does he say it? He he says he strains forward to what lies ahead. So there is some, you know, it's okay that maybe there's some moaning and groaning going on to uh, to persevere. Sometimes we cry out to the Lord when we are in the midst of trials. But friends, let's we can be encouraged. Let's be encouraged because it is Christ Jesus who makes us his own. This is his work. He's already won. He already holds on to us. He's already called us to himself. Uh, he is going to uh, reveal when we are going astray in our thinking, our speaking, our living. All we have to do is hold true to him. Ah, friends, how beautiful is that? Today, to live is Christ.